Hi guys. Oh, it is a beautiful. Well, it's still smoky, but the only way you know it's smoky is because it sure makes a beautiful full moon rise out there. The orange pumpkin moon coming up through the wildfire smoke uh, here on this. It is a Friday night, an exciting Friday night <clears throat> at Bugs in a Jar Farm. That would be Friday, August 16th, 2024. And uh, so we all know what Friday is. What is Friday, little dog? Friday, it is time for our Ain't Gonna Happen, our AGH Roundup of the Week, where I simply go on here to the mainstream media and then over to medium.com, over to the Doomers, which uh, the hopium-filled Doomers at medium.com in a race with the hopium-filled clueless morons on the mainstream media. So, uh, where should we? Let's start with the mainstream media, and this ain't going to happen around up. And I got to put the little dog. I'm sure it breaks his heart. A little dog. I'm going to put you to bed. We're going to get out and look at the number one, the number one story uh, on the mainstream media. Imagine that. <clears throat> Kamala Harris just unveiled her economic plan to, quote, lower the cost of living. And there you go. Kamala Harris is uh, going to lower the cost of living. But I guess uh, the, the one thing she's not lying about here uh, is one of the things to lower the cost of living is she is proposing uh, just paying people who breed, just paying breeders $6,000 just of taxpayers' money, just uh, the highest and best use of $6,000 is to pay people to breed. So if anybody thinks Kamala Harris the childless old cat lady uh, is an extinctionist. I would like to hear what Elon Musk has to say about Kamala Harris suggesting that the U.S. taxpayers should just pony up $6,000 for every new little clueless moron born on the planet. But uh, that's enough of politics. We're going to go from Kamala to monarchs, <clears throat> scientists prepared to save to save the monarch butterfly in the event of a quote rapid extinction. <clears throat> scientists in North Dakota announced Tuesday they are prepared to repopulate the iconic orange and black monarch butterfly, which has been classified as an endangered species in the event, quote, of a rapid extinction. Yes, a USDA scientist in Fargo revealed they have developed the first ever cryopreservation protocol for, quote, the successful long-term storage of monarch butterfly germ plasm, close quote, more commonly known as sperm cells. Yes, quoting uh, Courtney Grula, uh, quote, one of these mad scientists, quote, this study is the first to implement a technique to extract semen from the male reproductive tract in insects, a common technique used in mammals. So there is a great growth opportunity uh, in the uh, 21st century is extracting semen from insects. Okay, 
and the technique allows per, for prever, the preserved samples to remain viable and highly intact post cryop preservation, meaning freezing it basically. Okay, in the event of a population loss, you know, a, a basically a crash and burn of the monarch butterfly, the viable sperm cells could then be used to bring back the monarch butterfly. Yes. Researchers are currently assessing artificial insemination techniques for female butterflies using cryopreserved sperm cells. Oh, God. This one from Newsweek's Better Planet. I did not make it past the headline because there's no need to. Take it away, Newsweek. <clears throat> the way to make a better planet near limitless energy coming closer to reality with the help of mayonnaise. Okay, enough of that. Now this is, uh, if you think that you're going to get Americans more concerned about the climate catastrophe by calling it what it is, ain't going to happen because we find out here uh, from some professor of something, <clears throat> Americans respond more to climate change than other, ter other terms. You probably have been hearing phrases like the climate crisis the climate emergency, or even climate justice more often lately as people try to get across the urgent risks and consequences of climate change. The danger is real, but is using this language actually persuasive to the average clueless fucking moron? <coughs> it turns out that Americans it turns out that Americans are more familiar with and more concerned about climate change and global warming than they are about the climate crisis, the climate emergency, or climate justice, according to a recent survey we conducted with a nationally representative sample of over 5,000 Americans. Moreover, we found no evidence that the alternative, you know those doomer porn terms, increased people's sense of urgency, willingness to support climate friendly policies, and of course, more importantly, the willingness to act. That, uh, that word act that you will, uh, you can't be talking about climate change, the climate crisis, the climate emergency, climate breakdown, climate chaos without the word act coming up like acting like there's a fucking thing uh, we're, we're going to do about it. Uh, I was going to save this uh, to the last, but let's go over there to medium.com to finish this out. Since we uh, m mentioned that since we already have our segue, this is Tessa Schlesinger. All right. Why climate change can no longer be stopped. Closing the stable doors after the horse is a bit silly. Yes. 
15 years ago I was writing about the need for urgent attention to climate change. Yes, the topic was still dead. Over the last two or three years it has become more urgent. The only problem is that we are way past the tipping point. An increasing number of scientists have said that they are surprised at the speed with which climate events are happening now. They weren't expecting it. <clears throat> For me, there is a simple explanation. Let me draw an analogy. When you cycle up a hill, you go more slowly, and it is quite difficult because there is a level of resistance. When you start going downhill, you pick up speed without any intention of doing so. My contention is simply that we do not have sufficient means to measure everything that is happening on this planet and the fact that the effects of climate change have already picked up so much speed and that it continues to do so is a sign that we are past tipping point. There is much talk of slowing down climate change so that we won't reach the tipping point as quickly as scientists think we will. I think they are closing the barn door after the horses fled. So then instead, since there's nothing we can do, it ain't gonna happen, Tessa instead looks at what could have been done, what should have been done. There are many things that could have been done and they were not done because virtually all people, particularly in America, have this idea that they must live their dream lives, follow their dreams, be a success, achieve this or that. With that kind of perspective, there was never a hubhubha. There was never a hubhubha. There was never a hubhubha in hell that anything that demanded extensive sacrifice would become the new zeitgeist. Here is what coulda, shoulda been done. Number one on the list. There should have been population control half a century ago, heading the list. And then, of course, uh, massive public transport options should have been built. We've all heard about, you know, GE and, uh, I mean, the, not GE, they, they were the ones who were fucked. Uh, the tire companies uh, putting the uh, electric car, the cable cars out of business. How about this one that never was going to happen? Advertising would have been banned. Consumerism, consumerism should have stopped a long time ago. How about no massive corporations? All skills learning should have been made free and there should have been massive education programs about overpopulation and finally get rid of religion. It is the biggest load of bull, she stopped at bull, ever created, the most massive con ever pulled. There you go. So that was the what uh, never had a chance of hell of happening. Okay. We have all heard uh, about climate change anxiety not to be confused with climate collapse anxiety or climate crisis uh, anxiety 
or climate chaos anxiety, there is only one way out of climate change anxiety from denial and degrowth nonsense to real solutions. This is by a fellow named Tim Anderson. This is Tim Anderson, uh, who at least uh, has the brains to uh, talk about this entire notion of degrowth. Uh, unadulterated horseshit. You can sit here and talk out your ass about degrowth, you know, about the humans voluntarily degrowing both uh, the economy and their own population, uh, particularly the economy. Yeah, right. So he spends a lot of time uh, busting the balls of uh, this bullshit. Uh, of degrowth, okay, the worst of the so these these bullshit solutions uh, is degrowth. Uh, so he goes on and on and on and on, uh, you know, shooting down degrowth. And uh, does he ever get to what he came here to talk about? Okay. Given that this degrowth is an unrealistic solution, what is the answer? Okay. The only way to stop climate change, the only way to stop climate change is to use economic growth itself to fuel a restructuring of our industrial base. Not degrowth, but selective growth. There you go. Uh, the problem is not economic growth itself. <clears throat> It is allowing, even encouraging via subsidies, the unfettered expansion of fossil fuels. Yes, under a policy of selective growth, those who benefit from fossil fuels will see the writing on the wall and give up. Yes. And potentially, governments will have to compensate people who use fossil fuels to give them up. Once the spread of fossil fuel use is stopped, the trade in fossil fuels must be ended globally. Finally, those of us who use fossil fuels, which would be virtually every person on the planet, must be compensated, at least in part, for their old engines and generators to replace them. Yes, this is the only way out of a climate ch change future we do not want to see that can happen on a reasonable timeline, meaning very quickly. Yes, and we as a society need all the economic power we can muster to make it happen. Yes. So, we're just going to read the handwriting on the wall and give up. Okay, but anyone who thinks that saving the world uh, involves any sacrifice, giving up fossil fuels, keeping your fucking pecker in your pants, not letting your knickers down, all of this talk 
about buying electric vehicles, not flying less. Uh, it's all bullshit. There is an easy route to save the world in Sylvia PM who looks like she's this little hottie, looks like she's about 17 years old. This little hottie, uh, clueless moron, Sylvia, is going to tell us about taking the easy route. Taking the easy route and saving the world. How protecting a small fraction of land can prevent mass extinctions and preserve our planet's future. Yes. I still remember being a teenager. Well, you look like you are a teenager. She probably still remembers because I think she's about 20. I still remember being a teenager who thought that the only way to save the planet was to remove everything from humans' hands, which is exactly the only way to save the planet. Oh, youth. Yes. Luckily, years of academic research and work in the nonprofit and public sectors have taught me that this, you know, saving the planet by making it essentially a, a human exclusion zone is just the worst idea. The worst way to save a planet is to make it a human exclusion zone, which ain't gonna happen anyway. Uh, everyone wants, needs, and deserves a place to live and a means to have a livelihood, and that is unfortunately incompatible with isolating humans from nature Okay, just like me, scientists, activists, and policymakers are increasingly recognizing the need for solutions. Okay, so what is the solution? Okay, all right, the bottom line, the most promising message by protecting, protecting just 1.22% of the planet's land surface, we could stave off what scientists are calling the sixth great extinction of life on Earth. There you go. So, I uh, humans get 98.78% of the planet's land surface. Okay, humans get 98.78%. The rest of our fellow earthlings combined, they get 1.22%. So we just have to figure out the 1.22% of this planet's land surface to make a human exclusion zone and goodbye six mass extinction. There you go. All right, I always touch base with Ray Katz, but uh, actually Ray Katz uh, you know, he, he's the guy always talking about the Saners. This is probably the most uh, sane thing I've ever heard Ray Katz write in Medium.com. <clears throat> is net zero actually a fraud used by climate criminals to protect themselves? And that's exactly uh, what it is. So he's talking about this unadulterated horseshit, the, the very concept of net zero. Uh, it, it, it is unadulterated horseshit on the face of it. Everything about it. Okay, this is, uh, this is how Ray is reading. 
uh, what net zero is. As I understand it, net zero refers to achieving a balance between carbon emissions and carbon removal such that the amount of CO2 would remain constant in balance. Is that right? Here on Earth, there is an enormous ongoing torrent of CO2 emissions with the fossil fuel industry subsidized generously so that they remain profitable even now when the cost of extraction and process processing exceeds revenue from sales. There's an old fashioned term that applies here, net loss. But um, there is literally no meaningful extraction of carbon happening whatsoever. Any carbon removal going on is so infinitesimal that to call it a rounding error, error would be very generous. I also see net zero is related to these unadulterated horseshit carbon offsets. Carbon offsets, which allows gigantic carbon criminals to pay a fee to organizations who claim to have reduced their carbon emissions and then keep abusing the earth guilt-free if everyone squints and applies very strong sunscreen. Now I might be missing something. I was being dubious but not facetious when I first suggested I might be misunderstanding something here. But the term net zero seems intentionally fraudulent to me, like using math to distract and confound logic, like if we use the term murderer neutral to describe a policy of freeing a murderer every time another murderer is executed and then claiming we are getting the problem of murder under control. If you twist your brain into a pretzel, it, you know, meaning all of this net zero shit, makes perfect sense. But it doesn't. Thank you, Ray. And uh, so we're going to wind up. This is actually Eric Lee's column, but, but a lot of time what Eric does is just... Uh, it, 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 it.